Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to your uh, interesting program. So today I want to talk about the world's first solar cell, Icarus, and the mission overview of the Julian Trojan asteroid exploration mission utilized the solar power cell. So first I'd like to show myself in this slide. I am now a postdoctoral fellow in the Lunar and Planetary Exploration Program Group in JAXA. And my main research interest is about the solar cell membrane dynamics and the spacecraft attitude dynamics and control. And also I am studying about the space system engineering. And I have studied about the Icarus and solar cell from when I was doctoral course student in ISAS in JAXA. I had studied about the numerical analysis on the cell membrane dynamics and the other activities on the Icarus shown here. And now I am studying about the uh, mission design of the future solar power cell mission. And also I am in charge of the design and the development of the power cell membrane and its deployment mechanism. So I, I want to talk about the Icarus and the solar power cell mission uh, based on my experience in the activity on JAXA. At first, uh, I'd like to show what is solar power cell. Uh, maybe you know the solar cell, that is a space yacht utilizing the solar radiation pressure and by a deployment of the solar cell with the large membrane. And that will be the fuel-free propulsion system. Uh, but uh, we JAXA are studying about the solar power cell. This is the advanced type of the solar cell and the Japanese original concept. And the solar power cell gets uh, electricity from the from synthetic solar cells on the solar cell. In Icarus, the, this blue area denotes the area of the synthetic solar cells. And in, uh, we get the power generation from the solar cell. So we think that it is key technology for the future outer solar system exploration because it can save the fuel and uh, generating high power at the point far from the sun. So now solar power cell working group in ISAS Jaxa is studying about two missions. First is uh, Icarus. So today uh, I want to mainly about Icarus and also I want to talk about the uh, extended solar power cell mission that launch target is early 2020s. In this lecture, uh, first uh, I will show the overview of the Icarus and the key technology of the spin type solar cell and also the flight result of the Icarus. And after that I will show the extended solar power cell mission overview. So uh, let's go to mission concept of the Icarus. And in this slide, I'd like to explain about the type of solar cell. I think that there is mainly two types of solar cell. First is the mast or boom-based type, like this figure. And another type is a spin type solar cell. In the mast type solar cell, that is some rigid support structure to deploy and maintain the membrane. But uh, spin type solar cell has no support structure. And the spin type solar cell is utilizing the spinning centrifugal force to maintain the shape of the cell. We JAXA think that there is the advantage of the spin type solar cell. That is that in order to deploy the large cell whose area is over 1,000 square meters plus, that should be light on. If we choose the boom type solar cell, the structure and weight will be very high, so it is not suitable for the huge solar cell. So uh, we think that the spin type solar cell is good for the development of the, for the larger solar cell. And the, our extended solar power cell mission is aiming to deploy the solar cell about 2,000 or 3,000 square meters. So we think that we should develop the spin type solar cell. So next, I'd like to show the 
overview of the Icarus. Here I show the main body of the Icarus. The diameter is about 1.6 meters and the head is 0.8 meters. And the mem cell membrane is about 200 square meters and the, its diagonal is about 20 meters. This is a spin type solar cell and uh, the weight of the main body is about 300 kilograms. Uh, we think that this is too heavy for the solar cell, but this is uh, just the sub payload and the demonstration mission, so we don't concern about the weight of the main body. And the weight of the cell membrane is about 15 kilograms. This slide shows the mission definition of the Icarus. There are two uh, minimum success missions. One is the deployment of the large membrane cell, and another is the power generation and the collection from the thin film solar cells on the cell. And the full success mission is to demonstrate the photon propulsion and the GMC by using the solar cell. And we uh, succeeded to complete all of the mission in 2010 by Icarus. And uh, here I show the uh, advantage of the Icarus. The Icarus is the sub payload of the Venus Climate Orbiter Akatsuki, so that is thrown into the interplanetary orbit. So we can estimate the effect of the solar radiation pressure because there is no <coughs> air drag or the gravity effect or the magnetic force effect. So we think that this is a very good mission to demonstrate solar cell dynamics. And the operation scenario of the Icarus is shown here. The mission duration is about half year, and in first few weeks, we completed the minimum success. And after the deployment, we go to the full success mission and achieve two, two missions. And after the half year, Later, of the deployment of the cell, the Icarus was flying by the Venus. From next, I'd like to show the key technology of the Icarus, especially the key technology of the spin-type solar cell. I'll show the design of the solar cell membrane of Icarus. The diagonal is about 20 meters, and the, there is some devices on the cell. This uh, light blue area denotes the thin film solar cells. And under the edge of the cell, there is a steering device. I will mention about this later. And the uh, other uh, structural devices is also used for the cell. And the tip mass is attached on the edge of the cell to support the spinning deployment. And the base film is made by uh, polyimido resin, and the thickness is about 7.5 micrometers. So if we made the whole cell by this polyimido resin, and the weight of the cell becomes about 2 kilograms or 3 kilograms, but now uh, there is the other devices, so the total weight of the cell becomes about 15 kilograms. I think that is the difference between the solar cell and the solar power cell. And one more important technology is how to deploy the solar cell. And this slide shows the method of the cell deployment. The cell is stored around the main body, cylindrical main body, like this here. And first, the main body is spinning up to 2 RPM. And then the tip mass attached on the cell is released. These are the locked during the launch, but at first these tip mass are released. And then go to the uh, deployment stages. Deployment is divided into two stages. At the first stage of deployment, the cell is deployed in quasi-static status. That is made by the rotation guide. There is a four stopper guide around the main body, and this is rotating around the main body. And this makes the cell to deploy like this here. The cell is uh, deployed like extracted like a yo-yo de spinner. And then finally the cell is uh, shaped like this cross shape. And then these uh, four rotation guides are released. 
then the same will be deployed like this square shape. This is a dynamic second stage deployment. If the same is deployed dynamically, the attitude of the main body will be changed dynamically. It should be keep in adequate attitude. If we did all phases by dynamic deployment, it is very dangerous for the main body. So we divided in two phases. First is the quasi-static phase, and the second stage is dynamic phase. And here I show the deployment video. First, the tip mass is released, and then spin up to 25 RPM by using the gas jet thruster. And then the rotating guide is rotating around the main body. The second the sail is deployed, like this crossed shape. And then uh, the second stage is like this here. The four guys are released and then the sail is deployed dynamically. This is the uh, images of the sail that is seen from the monitor camera. And the cell will be damping by its own damping effect. And the cell will be maintained in the complete square shape like this. This is a very important technology for the spinning deployment of the cell. And one more uh, important technology is how to control the attitude. Now, as you know, the solar cell controls its orbit by changing its attitude like this here. If cell is inclined like this, the orbit will be changed like this line. And if the attitude is inclined like this, orbit will go closer to the sun. So the attitude control is very important for the orbit control of the solar cell. So we are uh, studying about three methods like this. First is uh, attitude control by using gas jet thrusters. And one more is the method using the reflectivity control devices. We call this RCD in short, and I will explain in the next slide. And we also use this method using the solar pressure torque passively. This is the method used for the attitude control. And this slide shows the method using the RCD devices. The concept is to control distribution of the solar radiation pressure on the cell. And uh, this figure shows the image of the concept. And this gray line denotes the cell surface. And in this side, reflectivity is controlled to the specular reflection. And in this side, the reflectivity is controlled to the diffuse reflection. Then the solar radiation force will be like the F1 and F2. So there is a distribution of the radiation pressure. From this distribution, we can generate the torque like this figure. And we control the specular of the cell by using the LCD film, like these pictures. And this is a power on status, and this is a power off status. We can see that this is a, like a mirror. But this is not like a mirror. Uh, we loaded LC films on the edge of the cell, like this here, and uh, tried to uh, control of the attitude. So next, uh, I'd like to show the uh, mission flight result. The ICARS was uh, launched together with the Venus Climate Orbiter, Akatsuki, on May 21st, uh, 2010. Here, I summarize the operation result of the ICARS. In minimum success mission and full success mission. I'd like to show the result of deployment stage and the, uh, the figure of the separation camera and the data of the photon propulsion and the attitude control. The shape of the ICAROS is monitored by two types of cameras. First is the side monitor camera and the another is the separation camera. Now, side monitor cameras are fixed at the side of the main body uh, to take panorama images of the cell. And the separation camera is released from the main body 
to take full images of the cell. And the image data is sent to the main body via L3, and the camera will never return to the main body. And these are the images of the deployment stage. Now, first is the tip mass separation. Uh, we can see that the tip mass is separated successfully, like you. And next, we go to the first stage deployment. And these are the images in the middle phase of the first stage deployment. And we can see that the cell is deployed symmetrically in four directions. And these images are taken just after the first stage deployment by from the cameras. And we can see that the cell forms a closed shape from these images. And after uh, we confirmed the uh, finish of the first stage deployment, we went to the second stage deployment. These are the images just after the second stage deployment. We can see that the cell deployed successfully for each direction. And we can see also the harness and tether is extended successfully. We can also see the stopper guys are released all side. From these images, we can see that the cell deployment is success. But we can image the whole shape, whole shape of the cell, so we go to the separation camera mission. And we released the two separation cameras. And the, these figures are taken by first separation camera expert. The camera was separated from the main body at the velocity of 65 centimeters per square. So we can get a series of the images like this here. From this uh, 15 images, we can get the whole shape of the Icarus cell membrane. I think this is a very uh, famous image for the solar cell researchers. And we also go to the second separation camera experiment. We call this DCAM1. Um, this was separated with the uh, half velocity of the first uh, separation camera. That speed is about 35 centimeters per second. So we succeeded to take detailed cell and own shadow like this here. You can see that the tethers and the harnesses like this here. And we can see the detailed shape of the cell in this period. We confirmed the shape of the cell from the images.